Good thing about learning Blockout is that at the end, you have a nice base mesh for your character that you can freely shape and sculpt. In this one, I'm gonna show you how to make one, all by forming cubes. As always, you can find all the 3D files and real-time process of making these characters on my Gumroad and Patreon page, including this Blockout 3D model. Let's go. So first, let's start with head. Delete the cube to make another cube, cause that's how we do things around here. In the edit mode, make it longer. Ctrl R on the left edge to add a horizontal loop cut. Then Ctrl B to divide it into two. Now Ctrl R on the bottom edge this time to add a loop cut vertically. Now select the faces on the right and left. Right click and breach faces. Then delete the face in between. In the edge select mode, drag this one up and this one down. Then in the face select mode, select the face in the front and scale it down. In the Y axis, select the back faces and extrude them to the back. Then form it this way. Shift A and add another cube. Scale it up and rotate it to use it as the neck. Then make a cylinder and scale it up on the Z axis. We're gonna use it as the nose area. In the edit mode, add a loop cut and push it forward. Main mesh still needs improvement. So select it and in the edit mode, add a loop cut in the middle and push it forward. For the cheeks, add another cube. Stretch it forward, squeeze it down. It should be a bit longer than the size of the face. In the edit mode, select the face in the back and scale it down. Add another cube for the ears this time. Go to edit mode, then move it to the right. Scale it down on the Y axis. Shape it like an ear and place it in the back of the cheekbone. Work more on the overall shape of the head and get it closer to a skeleton head. Select the whole head. Scale it down and bring it up. Shift A and in the armature add a human meter egg. If you don't see the option, go to edit, preference and find the rigify add-on. Enable it and now you should see it. Get it up and get it to the size of the head. Head should be right where the head bone is. In the viewport shading menu, put the color on random so we can see each mesh by different color. This helps us a lot moving forward. Add a cube and place it on the torso. In the edit mode, shape it like this and Ctrl R to add a loop cut and push the bottom vertex to the top and shape it like this. Ctrl 1 to subdivide it one time, then add a loop cut to the bottom part so it would have a sharper edge. Let's add another cube, stretch it vertically and place it on the bottom of the torso. Add a few loop cuts to all sides, then subdivide it. Place the next cube on the hips, add a loop cut in the middle and drag the right and left edges to the top of it. Ctrl 1 or 2 to smooth it out. We still need another loop cut here, then we can shape it properly. We can use another cube for the back. Press Ctrl 1 or 2 to smooth out all the edges. Stretch it until it covers the top part of the body. It still needs more geometry, so we can press Ctrl 3 to smooth it even further. Place it in the back of the torso, but it needs to be visible from the front. Let's move on to the shoulders. Once you added the cube, go to edit mode and place it on the shoulder. Ctrl 1 to make it round and add a mirror modifier so we have it on the other side as well. Then in the sculpt mode, start forming it until it connects the torso to the arms. Add a new one. In the edit mode, scale it up on the Z axis. Make it smaller. Rotate it. Exit the edit mode. Press Ctrl 1 or 2. Then add a mirror modifier again. And place it on the arms. Add a few loop cuts. Then make the bottom face a bit smaller. Exit the edit mode. Ctrl D to duplicate and escape to place it back. Now go back to edit mode and place it on the forearm. Then make the bottom much smaller. Always look at the reference for this kind of stuff. For the chest, add a cube. In the edit mode, move it to the right. And add a mirror modifier. Rotate it and place it on the chest. Add a loop cut to the middle slightly to the right and push up the right edge. Then another loop cut to the left because we don't want a round edge. Exit the edit mode and press Ctrl 2 to smooth it out. It's way too round. So let's add few more loop cuts so we can shape it easier later. Moving on to the leg. To scale it up on the Z axis. Add a mirror modifier and in the edit mode put it on the right leg and fit it with the bones underneath it. Tap to exit the edit mode then Ctrl 2 as always to smooth it out. Back to edit mode. Add one loop cut to the top half and one to the bottom half. Then make the top half a bit bigger. Exit the edit mode and press Ctrl D to duplicate, then escape to place it back. Then in the edit mode, place it in the bottom and start shaping it. In the scalp mode, make a bulge in the top part of the muscle. If you look at some of the reference images, bottom half of the leg is slightly leans towards the back, so take care of that. Add another cube. In the edit mode, make it roughly the size of the shoe. Exit the edit mode, add a mirror modifier and subdivide. Then in the edit mode, add few more loop cuts for more topology. Then switch to bottom view and start shaping it based on the reference also captured from the bottom angle.
then select the first two faces on the top and drag it up on the Z axis. Add a vertical loop cut, then maybe add another loop cut horizontally to make the bottom edge sharper. Now we have a base shape for the body that we can improve upon. Start refining the shapes while looking at some reference images. Let's not forget about hands. First we gotta make the palm of the hand. So in the edit mode, squeeze it down to make it almost the size of the palm itself without the fingers. Add a loop cut vertically and move it to the right cause palm is not flat. Then add another loop cut horizontally and push that one to the right as well. Go to top view and add two more loop cuts and drag them out for a smoother curve. Exit the edit mode and smooth it out to see how it looks. Back in the edit mode, on the inside, add another loop cut and push the faces to the outside. Do the same thing to the upper part as well. Then go to sculpt mode and using grab brush, drag this part out. For the finger, bring in a cube. Stop the white and in the edit mode, add a loop cut to the top side and the bottom side. Now we should have a nice smooth cylinder. Shift D to duplicate, skip to place it back. Move it on the Z axis and place it on top of the other one. Do that one more time. In the modifier properties, hover your mouse on the subdivision modifier and Ctrl A to apply it. Do that to the other two as well. Go to sculpt mode and start forming them like fingers using grab brush. You can switch between the objects. To do that, just hover your mouse on one of them and press Alt Q. Now we can scope another specific object. When you think it's good enough, select all of them. Move and rotate and place it in the bottom of the palm for the index finger. Remember, it should have a slight angle towards the left. Then duplicate and place it for the middle finger. It should have less angle than the index finger. Rotate it to the right just a bit. Do that to the other two fingers. Moving on to the thumb, place a cube on this side of the hand. Subdivide and extend it to the direction of the hand. Then start shaping it in the edit mode. If you want to sculpt it, you can apply the subdivision modifier and go to sculpting mode. Now select two parts of the other finger, duplicate and escape to place it back, then in the edit mode, move it to the thumb, rotate them to match the direction of the thumb, then start shaping it. Thumb finger has a slightly different shape than the other fingers, so you need to make it a bit larger, but do it while looking at some references. Once you are done, select the whole hand, go to edit mode and move it to the wrist and fit it with the bones. It doesn't matter if the bones are not matching, just make sure the overall size is close to the rig. Now we can start adding the secondary shapes. At this point, we mostly don't need new meshes and we're gonna duplicate our existing objects. First, select the waist and duplicate. Escape to place it back. In the sculpt mode, pick up move brush and push the sides to the inside. Then push the front forward. Since we enabled random colors, we can easily tell which one is which. Also move the bottom of the stomach to the outside. Now select the waist again, duplicate and escape to place it back. In the sculpt mode, push everything in, then take the bottom half to the outside of the body. For the back, select the waist again. Just like before, duplicate and take it outside of the body. Make the top wider and bottom slimmer. Then smooth out any irregularities. We're also gonna divide the ribcage area. We can use a simple sphere for the elbow. Now let's divide the muscles of the arms. Just duplicate and separate the front from the back and make them pop out a bit more. Do the same thing for the forearm as well, but this time separation starts at the middle of the biceps all the way to the wrist area. Now let's duplicate it one more time and divide it from the previous muscle. 
Let's push these areas to the inside using move brush to make a hole in between two meshes. Then fill in the hole with a sphere and shape in it until it fits the hole. Let's push these meshes inside again to make a similar hole, then fill it with a sphere. I add a sphere that's been stretched vertically just a bit and place it in the hole. Add a loop cut in the middle and push the top to the back. Add another loop cut close to the center because I want it sharper. Then push the bottom to the back as well. Squeeze it a bit more and move the loop cuts towards the bottom. Then add another loop cut to the top side. In the wireframe mode I select the right and left vertices and push them up a bit. Then work on the overall shape. Now it's time to duplicate the thighs and separate the muscles here as well. Also for the cows as well, we need to separate the front from the back. For the neck muscles, duplicate the neck mesh and pull out the sides to, to create the muscle tissues around the neck. We forgot the color bone, so I just duplicate the chest mesh and move it upwards. In the edit mode, delete the second and third row faces. Then in the bottom, select the front and back edges. Right click and bridge edge loops to fill it up. Now make it smaller and place it in the back of the chest mesh. We're mostly done. Just go around the model and refine the shapes and get them closer to the reference. You have probably noticed we only have one hand. There's a big possibility that you've moved these meshes outside of the edit mode and messed up the origin. To fix that, let's select the full hand. Contour J to join them all together. Shift S and set the cursor toward origin. Then right click and set the origin to 3D cursor. Now its origin is in the center of our scene. And when you add a mirror modifier, we have the hand on the other side as well. In the render properties, I change it to workbench, put it on matcap and change it to a material so we can see all meshes in the same color. Now we can see it better. Better. I select the head component and in the edit mode add a few loop cuts to the edges. Then out of the edit mode press ctrl 2 to subdivide but it is still too round. So I add more loop cuts in the edit mode and do the same thing to the other parts of the face. Then subdivide. I choose each object and hover the mouse on the modifiers and ctrl A to apply them. We don't want any modifier left, especially mirror modifier because we're gonna join them all together and modifiers might cause some problems. Do that to all objects. Once done, select all of it. Ctrl J to join them all together then add a remesh modifier. Change the size to a reasonable number so it's not really heavy but you're able to see the details now you can hover your mouse on the remesh and apply it and there you have it our block out is done now we can go to sculpt mode and start sculpting the character we want i hope you enjoyed the video if you did hit that like button and sub if you want to see more of these videos and don't forget you can download all the 3d files and real-time process of creating these characters on my gumroad and patreon page see you on the next one peace